Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about our beautiful neighbor Venus, the planet that seems to have at least 37 active volcanoes on the surface, something that kind of surprised the scientists. So let's talk a little bit more about this discovery and what this all means and welcome to what the man. So let's just say you were choosing a new planet to try to colonize and to try to send a new mission to. We have two choices. Either we go to Mars, which is obviously being planned by different space agencies and of course Elon Musk, or we can try something a little bit different. We can try Venus. Now as you can see, in terms of Earth similarity, Venus is actually a much better and a much more Earth-like contender. Its size and mass are relatively similar, it also has relatively thick atmosphere on the surface already, it has a lot of necessary components that could potentially form Earth-like conditions, but we obviously would have to terraform it using methods and techniques we just don't have yet. But most importantly, unlike Mars, Venus also has at least some areas in its atmosphere at an altitude of just over 50 kilometers, where the conditions are somewhat similar to the atmosphere of Earth. The only difference being that there's no oxygen and there's a little bit more acidic compounds, but we've already speculated that life could technically exist there. Although in every other respect, at least on the surface, the conditions here are, well, comparable to what you would call hell. Extremely hot, extremely pressurized and very acidic. This is the actual picture taken by the Soviet Venera probes, the probes that were able to survive for only a couple of hours before being completely destroyed by the conditions here. But it seems like the more we learn about Venus, the more we realize that it does seem to be a place where life could potentially exist, and most importantly, this planet does seem to have a lot more activity than we originally speculated. And not just atmospheric conditions, but also conditions on the surface, making Venus a lot more geologically active than we originally believed. And geological activity is, as we know today, extremely important for, well, not just maintenance of the planet, but also the potential existence and maintenance of life on the planet as well. And one of the more important geological activities that we can have on the planet is, of course, volcanoes and plate tectonics. But unfortunately, we haven't really discovered any plate tectonics on Venus, so we don't really know if there are any, most likely not so far. But in terms of volcanoes, the story is completely different. Although, these are not really the volcanoes you're going to find on Venus. They're a little bit different, actually very different. They seem to be very different from anything we have on planet Earth as well. And the reason we know so is because of the signs we've observed on the surface of Venus, the objects that the scientists currently refer to as corona. Now, these geological corona have only been found on two different objects in the solar system. One of them is Venus, and the other one is the tiny moon known as Miranda that orbits Uranus. Here is what Miranda looks like in comparison to planet Venus and to some extent planet Earth as well. Both Venus and Miranda have these corona, and they seem to be forming in a very similar fashion by the action of the heat from the inside of the planet and a kind of a heat bubble that forms underneath this region here that then lifts up and as the heat dissipates and also as some of the lava escapes here it leaves behind these strange corona some of which are quite gigantic in size this one known as the artemis corona is about 2000 miles or about 3000 kilometers in size with the actual volcanic activity happening right here at the edges of this corona and so the scientists behind the paper you can find in the description essentially try to investigate this by simulating how these corona are formed and by trying to analyze if the structures that are visible on Venus and of course on Miranda could be explained as a kind of a volcanic activity on the inside of the planet. And because there are so many different corona on Venus and because these corona don't really have a very good explanation right now, other than of course being created by some kind of a volcanic activity, the scientists in this paper were very eager to try to recreate the morphology or the actual visible signs of these corona by using computer simulations. And they of course discovered that it's very likely Venus is still volcanically active and what we're observing on the surface of Venus can only be created by a recent volcanic activity from these unusual corona formations. And at least on planet Earth, volcanoes mean quite a lot. For example, you might already know that volcanoes recycle a lot of different stuff on our planet, including of course carbon dioxide. 
So for example, here is one of the things that happen on planet Earth. This is a very simple simulation tool created by the scientists in Colorado University. Here what you're looking at is the new plate that's going to be going under this older continental crust plate. And this layer right here shows you all of the sediment that was deposited over time, including all sorts of minerals that were created by fixating, for example, carbon dioxide or even things like sulfurous and phosphorus. And eventually, as the plates start moving and one goes under the other, within only a few million years, all of this carbon dioxide, as it warms up inside the planet, and of course other chemicals as well, they'll start slowly seeping out, creating the volcanoes on the surface of the planet. This is just one of many ways that volcanoes do form on the planet, and as you can see right here, all of this gas right here gets released into the atmosphere, gets used by different types of life on the planet, and then eventually gets fixated into the different types of sediments that then continue the cycle. So all of this takes a few million years to complete, but this is how a lot of the circulation of the atmosphere happens on the planet, and this is why volcanoes and geological activity on the planet are essential for the survival of life. Obviously, this is a very, very simple model, a lot of more complex things going on, but this is one of the reasons why discovering volcanoes on Venus is kind of important. It allows us to understand that the planet might be a lot more geologically active than we initially assumed. It also, of course, means that trying to investigate and obviously colonize this planet at some point might be much more beneficial than trying to colonize Mars that doesn't really have much going on on the surface or inside of it. Unlike Mars, Venus seems to be quite geologically active and also might be able to, at some point, recycle its atmosphere. And as you can see from this illustration, the scientists have confirmed at least 37 different active or possibly dormant volcanoes that at least to some extent were recently active. Now, interestingly, on the surface of Venus, all of these corona are usually extremely large, at least a few hundred kilometers in size, suggesting that the volcanoes here, at least the ones we've seen so far, seem to be these gigantic formations unlike the ones on planet Earth. On Earth, the volcanoes for the most part are much smaller and also seem to be distributed along the lines of the tectonic plates. So Venusian geology does seem to be at least to some extent different, but this is just some of the ones we've discovered. There could be a lot more hiding underneath the atmosphere. Nevertheless, all of these discoveries, along with the missions that NASA is planning, will definitely make Venus a super exciting world for us to explore in the next decade or so, mostly because the missions being planned here are going to redefine our understanding of this planet. And you never know, at some point we might even find a way to somehow remove all of this toxic and thick atmosphere and possibly even find ways to somehow slowly terraform Venus back into what it used to be a long time ago an Earth-like planet. At least, we think it used to be like this. And even if it wasn't, it still doesn't hurt for us to try to colonize it and to try to create something beautiful there as well. And one of the major discoveries in this paper is in regards to the differences between these corona that are present on Venusian surface. According to the scientists behind this paper, the differences are actually from the different ages of these corona. In other words, they all seem to progress to the same stages, but they do look very different depending on the age and, of course, the size of the corona. In other words, all of the newer corona, all of the ones that are still active, will have very similar features that seem to be all present along the edges of this corona, identifying Venus as a geologically active planet. And the other major discovery is that these uh, active coronas seem to be also kind of clustered. As of some regions of Venus are still active, the other regions not so much. You can see some of this clustering right here, for example. This, of course, suggests that maybe there is some sort of a strange geological activity we haven't really learned about yet. And instead of plate tectonics, maybe Venus has something else going on that allows it to exchange the material over time. So honestly, all in all, this is a pretty exciting paper and only gives us one more reason to try to go and investigate Venus in the next few years. Likely, NASA is definitely planning at least one mission here. The mission that you see right here that NASA will be launching in the next few years, and you can also learn about this in one of the previous videos, but hopefully even more missions will be planned and launched to Venus in the next few decades, because this is definitely one of the more exciting objects in the solar system. And the volcanic activity discovered in this paper is one of many reasons why Venus should be our priority, not really Mars. But I guess until we discover more exciting things about Venus, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. 
Thank you so much for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. And maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can also find it in the description below. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye.